What's up guys and welcome back to the shop. Today I have something that I think is gonna be really cool. If you remember back in the day, when I first got this motorcycle, there was nothing out there for it. But what I found was integrated turn signals for an R6 that worked perfectly. Also, I built my own fender eliminator out of TST Industries parts. Now obviously I've got the new TST block off plate and all that stuff and it looks much better than what I did back then. But what I have kept was the R6 integrated turn signals. And let me show you what these things look like. If you, they're pretty cool. But there's no doubt that that turn signal is very hard to see and people do not know if you're signaling. So what we do have today is something from VF Designs, which is pretty rad. This is going to be essentially a plug and play DRL system that is gonna allow us to have better looking turn signals. And let me tell you, they look freaking amazing. So we're, I'm gonna show you guys how to install these today and then I'll let you guys know what I think. All right, so this is a fairly easy job. The first thing we're gonna go after here is getting our seat off, and then we need to remove these little pop pins, and we can do that just by pushing in and pulling them out with our fingernails is just fine. And then we can just pull this guy out of the play. We'll get that toolkit out, and sadly we have to go after these seat bolts. All right, now we can remove our seat. So what we wanna get out here is our ECU. Now to do that, we wanna kind of loosen some of this up. So we're gonna go after these two pop pins down here as well. And this will give us just a little bit of room to maneuver these plastics. Now it's not a lot, as you can see, it's probably just enough. But what we can do is reach our hand down here, grab the bottom of that ECU and just pull it right out. See how I can kind of finagle her out? It's not easy to get it in and out, in fact, it might almost be easier if you don't want to do it this way to loosen these and remove these. So now that we have the ECU out, everything is routed in here. Now you could tell mine is probably a little different and that would be because I have already done all the installation of the JL designs, integrated turn signals. So what we want to do here is get all of this out as best as we possibly can. This would be my license plate light. And if at any given time you're wondering what is what, because obviously we have a lot of these wires, right? This yellow wire, we're gonna go ahead and unplug it. And you can see it's just a little and pull it out. For now what we'll do, because we've undone the yellow one, which is what came with our JL de designs, so it might be a different color for you. But if you don't know which one you unplugged, the best thing you could do is turn on and figure out which one you unplugged. This is my left turn signal and I am getting a left turn signal. This is my right turn signal, and I am no longer getting a right turn signal. So that now tells me this yellow wire, this connector from JL Designs anyway, was for my left turn signal. And now that I can see the connectors, that the white connector that comes with the motorcycle is for your left turn signal, and the other connector, which I'm gonna unplug right now, which is for the JL Designs turn signal, and it's kind of hidden down in here, which is gonna be this one that's really kind of stuck down there. This is gonna be our right turn signal. So that's good to know. And of course this one here is our license plate light. We've got our ECU out of the way. We've unplugged both left and right turn signals. And the thing that I'm going to do with this, I'm gonna make both my JL designs and my VF designs work together because I want both of them going. So I'll show you guys how to do that. If you are just installing these lights themselves, you would just use the left and right turn signals for the left and right turn signals. You would unplug your license plate light if you have that license plate light or with the VF designs so that you could have your running light, you would plug this guy in for your running light and then this guy in to have basically running 24 seven. So these guys are gonna give you left and right turn signals. These two connectors that come with JL Designs are gonna give you your license plate light as well as your running light for the turn signals. So that would be how to install if you're not going to integrate your JL Designs integrated turn signals. The right side turn signal is the white. That stayed true with the motorcycle as well because if you remember when we unplugged the white connector versus the black connector, we lost our right turn signal. We'll just kind of slide it inside this painted fairing versus the plastic fairings. And then we can shove it all down in here and kind of pull all these wires out. We have our cords ran through the motorcycle and coming back up, here are my JL design wires. So now what we're gonna have to do is basically rewire these. We're gonna have to cut off these connectors and wire these two wires into 
these VF designs. We could pull this white connector back so you could see we have red and black wires in here. We're going to try and peel the rest of this really nice melted on uh, fabric wire protector, which kind of sucks that we're gonna kind of chew all this up, but really we need to connect these two together. Instead of soldering, I did find these really freaking cool things that we are going to use to connect these wires. So this, I highly recommend these. I'll link these down below. These used to be insanely expensive and now they are very, very inexpensive. Don't ever solder again, it's a waste of time. So I'm just gonna try and strip some of this stuff back. As you can see, it does come apart fairly easily. So what I'm gonna do is the same thing that VF Designs did with this idea is to hold all these together and just melt them real quick. That'll keep them from unraveling any farther than they already have. There we go. So now we got our red wire exposed and here is our yellow wire. So I've got about three inches ish, maybe two and a half of exposed wire here. I'm gonna cut this one and I would try and give yourself as much room from here as possible because just in case you mess up, we've got a little extra room. Now I'm gonna splice this guy here. We'll splice this one here. And then now we need our jail designs. We're gonna clip off. There we go. So now we have these two wires and these two wires. We'll see if this one will fit. Just, yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. It slides on in. We'll run this guy down there. All we really got to do is make sure that they go inside the metal of the centerpiece here, because that is the solder in there that is going to melt into these wires. Now that we have these two together, you can see all that solder melt. That's going to grab and hold really well. And then the rest of it is like shrink wrap, except for the little red piece at the end there is also going to seal it. So now we have a very nice connection here. Both of these are plugged in and ready to go. Let's plug this in and make sure it's working properly. It's because I want to see if the running lights work too. Plug it in VF Designs plug and then our other part of our VF Designs plug is going to go into there. All right, everything's plugged in. Let's make sure it's working properly. So now we have the jail design right turn signal with the VF design right turn signal. Okay, so we'll get the other side done real quick now that we know everything's working properly. And I will speed this one up so that we can get caught up. So really we just wanna pull the shrink wrap back if we can. And it looks like I'm having a hard time with it. So instead, goodbye shrink wrap. Now for this part, obviously quite difficult because this stuff is very strong. All right, looks like we are separated there. Fairly easy to kind of pull this stuff down. That should be our power wire. We'll go ahead and snip it in half, strip it, cut off the connector, strip that guy as well. Whew, I got quite the rat's nest going on here. <laughs> so we'll get this guy. I'm gonna slide that in, make sure it goes in the solder. And then we gotta make sure this connector gets into that solder as well, which it easily did. Get it burnt, that melted. I'm gonna electrical tape them together and <laughs> see if we can get all this frayed stuff back on in here. All right, so there is, there's one of them. I'm gonna unplug the other one and do a little, little tape job on that one as well. So there we go, there's our connectors, but white is gonna go to white. And if you remember, deep down in here is the other connector. It looks like if you stick your fingers around the other side, you could hold it a lot easier and connect it. Our next thing to do here is try to kind of wind all this forwards and backwards, run it through that plastic cabling in here because there is some nice plastic ways of managing cable inside there, which is nice. Got our wires half ass put back in there. That will work. Last thing is ECU. So this little tab right here is what's holding the ECU in place. So there's one on each side and technically they're off centered slightly. So this one is low and this one is high. So we will do as the, as getting this thing out, do our best to kind of weasel it in there. <clears throat> like I said, if you're having a hard time with this or you've never taken your ECU out before, Definitely highly recommend removing these four bolts so that you have a lot more play in here and you can actually open this up and see. Now, sadly, I've taken this ECU out so many times, but I have a pretty good idea of how to get it back in. All right, she's back in there. Now that we have everything wired up, we're gonna do one last test, make sure everything is working because we've messed with all the wires. So there we go, there is our right turn signal. There is our left turn signal. And we'll see what the brake does. And there is our brake. Now, technically we don't need any of this open anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and start doing some of the insulation process, which is these two pop pins that need to go back in. Our seat can go back on and our two five millimeter hex keys can go back in the seat. This little plastic cover, which is always a pain, easy to get off, always a pain to get back on, right? There we go. Pop these out, push them in, pop them out. 
push them in. All right. His last thing to do here is to line this thing up. And what I found interesting kind of messing around with this is I've noticed kind of how useful a door trim tool is going to be for this installation because we need to spread the painted fairing like that from the plastic one. So I'll link these down below. So the first thing we need to do here is clean these areas out because obviously this is a 3M sticky tape and you want to have the area in which the 3M tape is going to go to be as clean as possible. So this kit actually came with its own rubbing alcohol pads, which is cool. So we're gonna just kind of wipe down where we're gonna install. And if you don't feel this is good enough, I would say get a microfiber cloth and maybe get some more rubbing alcohol and do this again. What we're gonna do here is start by heating this up. I want this to be as pliable as possible. Now, <laughs> it is a 95 degrees out right now, so this is already really pliable. Even though it's hot, I am still gonna add some heat. We're just gonna try and heat this guy up even more, make it as pliable as we can. So let's get this double-sided tape off. We'll get this guy as close in as we can. There we go bending around that corner. And then of course, this is probably gonna be the hardest part. Like I said, getting this inside without losing all the stickiness of it. Oh, there we go, it went in pretty good. And you can feel the back inside to see if it's grabbing or not. And that is grabbing really good. Hell yeah, that actually worked out much better than I anticipated it would. It probably would not hurt to sit here for 30 seconds or so, just simply squeezing and holding this tape in place, because the longer it has to set, the better. And I think I got away with it a little bit because of the... So here is the first one installed, so we can see what it's gonna look like. That looks so good, guys. Jeez, love it. Look at that running light. Damn, that looks good. Yeah, this is a must-do, guys. You just gotta be really careful with it. Make sure it's nice and clean, you get a good seal. I like it. So let's get the other side real quick. So I'm gonna do the same, get some heat in there. It'll be good and loosened up. It's a little warm. Rotate it in, kind of stick it down as far as we can while getting that glue, while getting that tape right there. I think that'll work good. There we go, get that rotation in there. Try and smash it up against the back wall. That's definitely useful right there doing that. We'll get a little pry up. Hopefully shove this guy in without it you, you getting too much glue. There we go. Yeah, that actually went really well too. Hell yeah. Same thing, I would take some time, make sure all this is exactly where you want it, apply a lot of pressure on it. The longer you can hold 3M tape down, the better chance you have of it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the seat cowl back on so that we can see how it looks like. And man, doesn't that look clean. That is really cool. We need to get out and ride this thing. I'll see it out on the road. <laughs> 